quickly and get through the speech in about six minutes. I'm going to be talking about a song, so I'd really like to play it, but if I run out of time, I will have to refer you to later. No, I'll, I'll see if I, get, if I have time. <clears throat> there we go. So this song uh, that I'm going to speak about, is a, it's different than most of the content of this conference so far in that it's a very specific example of uh, implementation of cultural diplomacy. Um, it's what I feel is a very effective use of uh, popular music to implement a cultural change agenda. So um, it's diplomacy in the sense that there is an NGO involved that has a cultural change agenda. They want to uh, change the value system a little bit, and they're gonna try to implement this through cultural use, through an artist, through a song. Now, traditionally, this was most effective when it's organic, when you don't see the government or the cultural force behind this, the music, rock and roll and jazz being great examples. Got that water, please? Sorry, I'm trying to talk really fast. That one, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. So uh, basically, what we're seeing here is a song uh, that's going to be about stopping rape, and it's going to be the attempt by an NGO to sort of be the invisible backer behind the artist and appear that the artist is making this as, as organic as possible. I think it's very, very effective, so that's why I wanted to talk about it more. So the context here in Liberia, we have an endemic rape uh, problem. Uh, I can't go through all these statistics, but the most important one is that the estimates are 60 to 90 percent of the female population was raped during the conflict uh, period of 1989 to 2003. Rape is a huge problem, and it's also worth mentioning that the society uh, has an elite that are based that are descended from the American settlers, and about 15 to 20 major tribes. So it's very diverse, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of tension. It's a post-conflict state. So just keeping in mind that people, um, they have problems getting along. That's another th important point to make, besides the rape issue itself. So the agents here at work, the international NGO is the sort of the, the, the source of funding, and they're engaged in what they are calling entertainment education. Uh, so they're using popular song and radio, and they're involved in many countries. But here, what they're gonna try to do is stage an intervention in the value system of the country through the use of entertainment. And what, part of what's going to make this example really successful is that the artist they're choosing is very much an anti-authoritarian uh, dissent, vo voice of dissent in the country. Um, he was beaten by the police because he wrote a song about policemen coming. Um, he has a very, very large fan base that is not elite-based. Most of the music industry that does exist in Liberia is very much for the elite because the, the common people don't really have a lot of... Uh, places to see music or artists that they can get behind because making music as an artist in Liberia is very difficult. So they were very good in that they got together with this gentleman in particular, Takun Jay. He's a rapper and he raps in uh, the dialect of the area. It is English, but can be a little difficult to understand. Uh, I have some lyrics with me if you're, if you're interested after this and seeing what he actually wrote. Um, there's also a Liberian NGO that's in, at play in the creation of the song. Uh, think they're um, a resource for victims of rape to go to. Um, uh, it's a shelter, and Takun Jay ends up going there and uh, speaking with the, uh, the rape victims to help him uh, come up with the ideas for the song. The song is a narrative that tells the story of a rape victim and how she eventually comes forward, and uh, the perpetrator is locked up, and um, she becomes a success later in life. So the agenda at play here is really interesting because it is cultural change. This is a rather strong intervention. Um, it's trying to encourage the reporting of rape incidents to the authorities, encourage family and community support of victims, discourage rape in the male population, combat the myth and superstition of rape as an empowering or a healthy practice, and encourage open discussion of topics. So that's a lot of different specific objectives that it's trying to uh, accomplish. And the methodology uh, that the uh, NGO uses is to sort of house all of this within um, a popular song. The target audience here is all of, all of Liberia, all walks of life, elite, common person, male, female, young and old, because rape affects everyone. Um, there's a special focus on young men, because hip hop is traditionally misogynistic, and as a male rapper, he's gonna have a specially good effect in convincing young men who may be considering perpetrating rape to, uh, to maybe not, not do it. Um, this song is definitely not intended for us. It is for the Liberian audience. So the NGO funded the video and the song, and um, it's interesting, I'm not, you know, it, it's very interesting here, how much is it the artist coming up with the idea versus the NGO encouraging him? I don't really know, I wasn't there, but uh, for this to be a repeatable sort of model for future interventions to sort of uh, convince a voice of dissent artist to, to get behind your agenda, 
that's really the trick, um, convincing someone like this to get behind your agenda. So I'm not quite sure the specifics on who had the idea first, but the point is that it's seen by the public as the artist's voice. It's not seen as the NGO, which is different from a lot of those um, signs you, you saw on the other slide where don't rape, stop rape. That's what we might call informational diplomacy instead of cultural diplomacy. Um, how am I on time? Can I play the song? Okay, great. So the outcomes, there's no outcome data quantitatively yet. It just came out, but uh, qualitatively, we're seeing a lot of good reports that, um, that it's having a good effect. Uh, I'm really hoping we'll see that rape reporting uh, statistics increase. But we don't have those statistics yet. But qualitatively, uh, just people seem to be talking about it more. And I just heard from uh, someone in Liberia that they're saying that women are actually going to the rapper directly to tell him when, uh, when they've been raped. So um, I don't know, I lived in Liberia for some years and I just, I saw it qualitatively having a very profound effect. So I thought it was really important to start talking about it even before we have any kind of statistical data. And I'm sure that next year that will all support that this is very effective. Yes, song for Hawa. Maybe while they're figuring out just some, some things that, that make me think when I see this, um, is this truly an, an organic human rights wonderful thing? Um, in this instance, it's really easy to say yes, but if you apply this model to maybe some, some cultural change objectives that aren't quite so uh, wonderful, the question of whether this could be uh, a little bit more of cultural programming and Western morals being Im Im you know, imposed on the, on the Africans, that's a question that comes to mind. And also, how important is it that the rapper is a voice of dissent? Could the same kind of song be made from someone who's just a popular artist? and doesn't have the sort of rebel nature. <laughs> there we go. This is the story of this girl who was younger, living with this guy who claims to be her uncle. Okay. Her mother brought her to this guy when she was much younger. To go to school, make her feel like a daughter. At the age of 14, her mother died, she discovered. A yeah. few months later, uncle attitude changed. What? Caught her in the corner, tried to put down her jeans. Oh. But she couldn't believe what was happening, so she screamed. Then he left her alone with her tragic remarks. Uh -huh. If you don't let me to do what I do, then you should pack. No more wow. paying your fees, no more food to eat. In hey. fact, I think my heart, you gotta leave. So okay. she sat alone all the time and she cried. Ah. And she couldn't believe what was happening in her life. Okay. Her uncle didn't stop until he get what he want. Oh. And then he to the kids and I wrong. The little girl start to worry. worry. No one to talk to her to give her courage. courage. She decided to leave. Who gonna pay her school fee? Who I gonna see. even find place for her to sleep? But she under the fear not to tear in the valley. Oh. She started getting reduced and dry in her body. Yeah. How can she move when she call up in a trap? What? But once two morning and she woke up with a station. Uh -huh. She went with tears in her eyes to the police station. Okay. She told the police how she got tormented. Ah. And they quickly ran and had been arrested. Uh -huh. so, take the message from me to you, parents. parents. Always learn to keep eyes. On the children, don't pick and choose among the children. In the community, be deaf for one another. Treat the children equal together, I think it's better. Okay. Yeah. 
Based on the facts, some guys they eat some bad habit. Yeah. Or such a habit like that, I think we have to stop it. Who told you ripping the children is gonna give you power? Oh. Destroying the children is that your desire? Ah. Parent control the children, don't leave them alone. Uh-huh. Rip all will happen when the child is alone. Two, oh, they are the feature and the leader of the universe. Yes. Give them the chance to grow up to be a better one. What? So whatever you are, there's one for everyone. everyone. The life of the children in this world, I'm speaking on. Uh. I can hold it the longer, my heart is burning on. Yeah. That's the end of the talking. I'll, I'll just finish by saying he also uh, was recently appointed by the Ministry of Gender of the country to be an anti-rape ambassador. Okay. So now he's also engaged in a lawsuit against the congressman for a physical altercation. So he enjoys this unique position of being very much a voice of dissent and fighting the government in some ways. But he's also an official representative of the Ministry of Gender. So I just think it's a fascinating case. And uh, thanks for letting me share it all with all of you.